it's Courtney Mims with Inside the Gators. We're here with our second podcast for you guys. Uh, we're going to be going over a lot of different things today. We got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's get right into it. I'm joined with Andrew Olson and Joseph Hastings, both also with Inside the Gators. And we are just going to get into it, guys. Are we, are we ready to talk some, some Gator sports? Are let's we ready? Go. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Um, so the big thing on everybody's mind this week, the news broke Monday night on Twitter, Gator uniforms. And I don't mean just the Gators uniforms. I mean actual Gator uniforms. They are going as, if you're living under a rock, I assume, they're going to dress as actual gators i mean the 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 uniforms are this greenish color they've got these scales on the on the arms you know and personally i don't know how i feel about them i know the fan base is split i know it's a little bit strange but i don't know how i feel about them what do you guys think what's what are your thoughts you know, I like my uniforms like I like my dinner. I like to, you know, separate my food. You know, I have my mashed potatoes, my vegetables on the side, chicken, whatever, and they're all separate. With this Gator uniform, there's no consistency whatsoever at all. <laughs> it's all jumbled up. I don't know what the pattern is. I don't know what's going on. I see blue. I see orange. I see green. I don't know. There's different types of green out there. There's the reptilian scales. I just don't know what to make with it. I like the mentality, you know, coming now, trying to embrace that pride of being Gators, you know, being in the swamp and yeah. trying to be intimidating towards your opponent. But come on, you could have gone <laughs> A better uniform than that just my opinion okay uh, i'm not feeling it no. <laughs> and just like, i'm just I'm not just, feeling it guys no i'll say one thing i'm glad they did not jump on the, the ever trendy black uniforms that oh seems i like, know seems like every school has a blackout uniform so yeah. i'm glad they weren't black they're a little too cluttered for my taste i like the clean traditional and mm. Nike has done um, gator skin stuff before. They yeah. did a they did an alternate uniform. I think 2010 season for Georgia game that had kind of some of the alligator scales to it. That was a much cleaner look, in my opinion. You know, I, mm. I think the gators should just stick to you know orange, blue, and white. Right. McElwain was was talking about it today <laughs> oh, at the God. press conference. He he, I think he was joking. He said his hate mail has tripled <laughs> since, oh, since, no. since the new uniforms came out. But the positive on the news side of things, he said players love it. He said recruits love it, and I guess that's that's really what matters. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're going to be wearing it on Saturday. Uh, I love the shoes. I think the shoes, the cleats, are my favorite part because they look like you're wearing like alligator. Like it looks, they really do look like an alligator skin. I really love them. Um, however, not so not again like you guys. Not so thrilled mm -hmm. with them. Uh, more importantly, in the marketing scheme for this, they let a gator on the field. <laughs> I think we are all missing the real big, big thing here. They are, they let a gator loose on the field. I'm sorry. It's still baffling me. It's, it is Wednesday as we are recording this and it is still baffling me mm -hmm. still. It's been a day and I, I just still can't believe they let an alligator loose on the field. Oh, just can't even. Only Can't the, even. Only the country boy, Nick Washington. <laughs> yeah. He's, well, that. he was like, I wrestle alligators in my spare time, guys. This is no yeah. big deal for me. So that really cool. We'll see how they look on, on Saturday. I'm a little worried for Mick Huber as he tries to figure out who the heck he's looking at on the field. But we'll see how it goes. But let's talk about this Saturday, guys. We are playing... I'm sorry, the Gators, not us. We're not going on the field, guys. Um, the Gators are playing Texas A&M. You know, a big game. It is a big game. A bad loss to LSU. Big game this Saturday coming out of it. I've read some 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 places think the Gators are a favor to win. Okay, cool. We, are lo we have lost, right? We're going to go to Coach Mack in a second with our injury report. But... We have some losses this week, or or some doubtful. Some some players are doubtful. Some big, big names that probably aren't going to be playing this week. We aren't going to see them, and I think truly that's going to affect how this team works. But let's hear from you guys. What do you guys think uh, about the Gators going into Saturday? Yeah, it, obviously injuries huge storyline right now with um. 
Tyree Cleveland out against LSU. The passing offense did not look the same. There was no, there was basically no deep threat. And he's he's got a high ankle sprain. He's trying to practice, you know, as, as Coach Max said, but he sounds doubtful, maybe questionable at best. Kadarius Tony, one of the other playmakers on offense, you know, dealing with an injury too. So there's a lot to be worried about on offense going into this game. And then on defense, this is going to be defense is probably first real test against a mobile quarterback. Now, Kentucky had a mobile, you know, a dual threat quarterback in Steven Johnson, but he didn't run that much. He didn't run as much as Kellen Mond does. And we're talking about defense that just let LSU's Danny Etling oh. run on them, you know. Which I, was horrifying <laughs> to watch. I'm sorry, just yeah. horrifying to watch. I mean, noted dual threat Danny <laughs> Etling is not not something you've ever heard before. Yeah. So that's a little bit concerning because Mon's athletic. He's fast. He's going to be a real challenge to contain. And that's going to be something to watch. Yeah. yeah, I honestly think that if the Gators are able to run the ball well to control the clock and to be able to let that defense stay off of the field, because in my opinion, you know, you're missing Nick Washington out there. And I look at him as kind of the leader of that secondary along with Duke Johnson. So I ne- think you need to let the defense stay off the field as long as you can. Run the ball with Malik Davis, run the ball with LaMichael P. Ryan, and also – I think a big key for me, and Andrew touched on it a little, uh, Texas A&M with their running game, you know, they have a mobile quarterback as well. They rank 23rd in rush offense this season, and I think that's going to be a problem for the Florida Gators, especially with the way LSU ran on them, Michigan ran on them as well. They've given up 100 rushing yards in three of the five games this season, so I think it's going to be key for the Gators to, one, be able to convert um, third downs, uh, two, be able to stop the rush offense of Texas A&M and then for them to be able to establish a running game uh, because they're going to be missing Tyree Cleveland and you know Antonio Callaway's been out the um, the whole season anyways but you know you're missing two big deep threats there and you're not going to be doing it long to Brandon Powell or Josh Hammond so you need to be able to get that running game going in my opinion. Yeah Yeah, you know uh, Texas A&M they actually when you look at the SEC stats they've got like the hot of of Florida's opponents so far, Texas A&M is like the highest ranked rushing offense. You know, oh, they're yeah. averaging like I think two twenty four rushing yards a game. Uh, well, you they're know, a threat. Like, yeah, you like know. you said, um, everybody, all Florida's opponents except Vanderbilt have rushed for one twenty or more. So that's a big concern. And you know, the offense running the ball is great, but we saw that a one dimensional offense really doesn't work. You know, the yeah. Gators ran. Or over, you know, five yards of carry, but you've mm-hmm. got to have a passing game to go with it too, especially yeah. especially if it's going to be close in the fourth quarter. What and do you I, think, Courtney? Oh yeah, I mean, I think you guys touched on on, on great points. Uh, I think we're missing the root of the problem as well. We don't have a great quarterback situation right now. We still don't have that problem solved. And I'm sorry, we can look back to, you know, two seasons ago um, when we had Greer go out and we had um, uh, Treon in, in, in his place, and it wasn't a good situation. And I feel like we're back at that inexperience, rushing the situation quarterback that, that, that to just get stressed. I, I And I know that's a weird word for it, but he's not comfortable in that position yet. And you can see it when he's, you know, watching, he's looking, he's looking. He can't see that, you know, Mark Thompson's uh, 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 open. He can't see that because he can't see the field. He's freaking out. He's sitting there. He doesn't know how to handle it. And it's a stressful situation. I mean, one of the biggest things people have told me who've played quarterback in high school, who played quarterback in college, who, you know, have done it at some point in their life, say you have to keep calm. You have to feel comfortable and calm. Two biggest things when being a quarterback. And I don't think Felipe Franks is there yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's going to get there by, you know, the end of the season. I don't know. We're, we're, you know, half, we're almost, I think we're halfway through or, or almost halfway through now. You, you know, we've, we, we need a quarterback that's going to feel comfortable. And that's what I think is a big root of our offensive issues. 
a big route. Yes, we can talk about the passing game, the running game, getting the running game going. But how do you get the running game going? You have a leader who is who is comfortable and he knows how to see the field. That's my biggest thing right now with the Gators. And once we fix that, yeah, we can start breaking down passing game. We can start breaking down uh, getting the running game going. But that's the root of the issues is really what I, I truly believe is is where the issues lie, you know, is in that quarterback situation. And, you know, what's, what's interesting is we haven't seen Malik Zaire since, right. since Michigan. Right. The <laughs> offensive line was terrible that day. I don't know. I don't know if Tim Tebow could have played behind no, the offensive no. line that Mm-mm. day. It might be unfair to hold that one game against Zaire, and with the problems that Franks is having, yeah. maybe you give Zaire a second chance. You know, he's had another month here to learn the playbook. You know, and he's ready to play. <laughs> he's ready to play. This is a guy who's come to the University of Florida thinking he is going to at least play some, at least play something. You know, this was a guy who came here ready to play. And I think, like Andrew just said, you don't hold that game against him. Yet that offense was terrible. I don't even think you can – I thought that was a practice game, really. I think we should all consider that a scrimmage, right? No. But really, this is a guy who came to play, and I want to see him back. And I want to see him back leading that offensive line. Now, maybe he sucks, but maybe he does some good things. Maybe he does what we need. It's That's worth a shot at yeah. this point. Yeah. yeah, honestly. I suggested it last week. I felt like, you know, with the experience that he has over Felipe Franks, look, Felipe may get there at some mm-hmm. point, and it is going to take game experience. But if you have, if you feel confident in this team and for Malik Zaire to take over as a veteran and le- be able to lead the offense down the field somewhat because we haven't been able to do anything offensively with Felipe Franks at the helm. So – I feel like if you can put in Malik Zaire, get that veteran leadership there, maybe he gives you a different dynamic to that passing game, maybe be able to get outside the pocket, make some plays. But uh, as of right now, if it, if it's stagnant this week against Texas A&M, you're going into a bye week. Man, when you come back against Georgia, you, you know I don't know if you're going to go back to Felipe Franks. You may have to go back to Zaire. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with every, um, with everyone's comments. Honestly, I, I think we're all in agreement here. We all have... Similar ideas, um, but we're getting a, a, up about 12 minutes right now, so I'm going to kind of roll us out of this podcast real quickly, but let me ask, because I'm going to do it every week so you guys can get annoyed about it. What is everyone's predictions for this game? What What's your score predictions? You know, what are, what are some predictions for this game? Uh, last time I picked Florida <laughs> to lose was the Michigan game, but, yeah, I'm doing that, that again. Oh, man. Um, I think Texas A&M is just too talented on both sides of the ball, and Florida's just got too many, too many injuries. I'm saying uh, 31-21 A&M. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going with Texas A&M in this game too. I'm going to make it 27-24. to I think it's going to be a close game down the line, but I think Texas A&M is just going to make a, one more play than Florida. Yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I'm definitely picking Texas A&M as well. I feel bad saying that. But I do – I think you're, you guys are right. They're they're more talented on both sides of the ball. And with our injuries or our doubtful people who are playing, really, really doubtful that they're not, not going to play. I don't know if that's a double negative, but, you know, uh, I really do think Texas A&M is going to come out on top. Don't know if it's going to be – by maybe 31. I don't know if I feel that. I'm going to go middle of the road. I'm going to go 24 for Texas a and I'm going to go, oh, I don't want to be horrible and people to hate me, but I'm going to go with maybe like 17 for Florida. <laughs> Is that bad, guys? I don't know, but that's what I'm That's what I'm thinking. So, um, but it was a great uh, – Blah, blah, blah. Can I talk today? No, I can't. Uh, thanks <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. Um, what's our, our Twitter handle? Shout out really quickly. If you want to keep the conversation going, you can hit us up at... Joseph A. Hastings. By Andrew Olson. And at Mims Courtney. So please uh, tweet at us, get angry at us, you know, t- <laughs> tell us we're wrong. Tell us your predictions. Uh, all of those things. And if you want to... Um, also, keep the conversation going. You can post on our discussion boards on InsideTheGators.com. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can let us know in the comment section. Whatever you want to do, we love hearing from you guys. And keep listening to us every single week. Uh, we really do appreciate it. So let's 
Have a great rest of the week. We'll see you guys next week, and let's uh, see what the Gators do on Saturday, right? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs>